Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hi Rangers, it's me, Jackie Cation Welcome to the dork forest It's 2024. Let's do this. Here's the credits, of course. Mike Rickberg sang that song at the beginning, and he wrote that song, and he sang it with Sarah Cohen, his wife, and he will sing the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Also, Patrick Brady, still putting this together. Video, audio, all of it. He's amazing. So, and Vilmos doing JackieCationStore.com. Squarespace is doing the regular Jackie Cation page, and I'm thinking of moving the Dork Forest and DorkForest.com away from WordPress because it's driving me nuts. But those are the credits. But if you go to JackieCation.com, you can get Dork Forest merch. You can get my stand-up merch. You can get my stand-up CDs and DVDs, which you'd have to have uh, devices for those. Uh, you could also see videos and find out any number of things. I have another podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show, but The Dork Forest is the flagship 18th year. We're doing it, you guys. You can go to my Bandcamp or my YouTube for extra content. Please donate is what I'm saying. It's 2024, and I think we've been in this long enough. Why don't you guys, everybody send me 100 bucks? That's what I'd like you to do. You can PayPal me. You There's links all over the pages. You can Venmo me at Jackie Cation. You can find me at a stand-up show and uh, hand me a sweaty wad of 20s. Do something. But I love doing the show. I would love uh, to make some money is what I'd like to do. In other news, I'm sure there's more things that I should talk about, but I can't think of them. But let's listen to who's going to dork out about something because that's my favorite part. Thanks for listening, you guys. You're all great. Let's get into the show. Somehow it got louder. Jackie Cation here. Rangers of the Dork Forest, know in your heart that I'm hearing a beep. I don't know if you're hearing a beep, but uh, there it is. It's going to be a great show, though. Beep notwithstanding, uh, because uh, old friend of the show, uh, someone I went to college with, and I still own <laughs> one of his, uh, I still have somewhere in a box, uh, one of your comic strips from from the newspaper of Wildlife. Oh, wow. That I cut out because it was so adorable and so funny that I liked it so much. John Kavalik, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome back to the program. Thanks so much, Jackie. It's great to be back. All right. Yeah. I don't know what that beep is. It's going to, uh, here's what we're going to talk. John Kavalik, if you don't know, currently does a web comic called Dork Tower. That's right. Separately, we came up with dork themed IPs, uh, parallel lives we've been living <laughs> and, uh, still living in Wisconsin, uh, John Kavalik and, um, comic strip. Game design, you know, like game designer, but also board game lover. Like you just mm-hmm. had a, a, a an article published in a board game book uh, called What Board Games Mean to Me, an essay in mm-hmm. that. And I'll put that in the notes so that people can look that up, get that at Amazon or uh, a local bookstore. Yeah, that's right. And uh, but Dork Tower webcomic every week, right? Uh, three times a week. Three times a week. Yes. Okay. That kind of yes. content. Nobody's got yes. that. I know. I know. Wow. Right. He's done. uh, If you if you remember, folks, he does all the art for the Munchkin series. uh, Uh, The vast majority of it. There are some other artists. Not all of it. Not Not all all of it. it. No, no, no reason to no reason to cut anybody out. And uh, and uh, and of course, hilariously, you drew the apple for apples to apple. Uh, I did. Which is awesome. (laughs) That, That one's kind of amazing. Right. And well, I also I did more for Apple Apples than just that, but that sure. is the one I get the most flack from from my friends. Uh, Andy, who is a fan, just yelled from the from the peanut gallery. I want to hear what it is. Would you yell? Also, cash and guns. Oh, oh I love cash and guns. You know, uh, Andy uh, yes. Andy Ashcraft, game designer, also teaches game design and uh, often uses cash and guns every semester. He uses it as an example to help people learn how to. Um, what uh, what 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 does cash and guns teach the world? I forget. As a well, we have a guest cameo. Pop a head in. Guest cameo. <laughs> Hello. Hey Andy. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Hello. Uh, cash and guns. What yeah, does it teach? Uh, what does it teach? Uh, I'm on mind block now that I'm on the spot. I'm on a mind block. It's um, 
the word. It's a, yeah, a, a sort of a, a harmony between storytelling and physical action. Ah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You could just put the card down, but instead you have a foam gun to point that's at right. somebody. <laughs> All right. There a we go. That was foam guns. A variety of foam guns. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I, I just, I do love that game. It is, you know, after, after Apples to Apples and Munchkin, that is definitely the third of the, the big three. The big um, three, you guys. Junk of all, yes. but doing his own work. You should know that there's going to be a Kickstarter in March, which is, uh, will be a month from now, about uh, putting all of the web comics printed. Printed, uh, you're going to print all the web comics into books and it will be an oncoming but there's thousands i should imagine three times a week yeah right now i mean especially since uh the patreon started back in 2018 or 2019 mm-hmm. um there are currently about 2300 scripts you, online you, were you more prolific when you were in lockdown do you think um or the some same. months i really was um okay, and i think yeah. it was I think it was because the strip, I mean, at the start, well, at the start of the Trump years, right? Um, I made the very, a very conscious decision. It's like, okay, am I going to use the strip as escapism to help right. people forget about shit of, of, going About on? the nightmare going on around them? Yeah. Yes. Um, or am I going to use it to address issues as they happen? And I made the very conscious choice to use uh, my strip to address what was going on. So nice between, uh, between the Trump years and then the pandemic and everything, it was very cathartic for me and right. the readership just exploded. Uh, so, okay. Was, so people wanted it as yes. well. That's yes. amazing. That's great because I made a conscious decision to not with the dork <laughs> forest. I was like, people might want to go to sleep to this. <laughs> and uh, so I want to hear what people are enthusiastic about. And I do get it. I mean, I, I definitely, you know, like it, it, it gets, it, it, it comes in like current events and, and current issues, obviously. Right. Come up. Yeah. But and the, I used to be yeah. an editorial cartoonist years ago. Right, um, right. And I really didn't enjoy it that much. I, um, uh, politics just really, uh, they can get me down. They can really get me right. down. Well, that's I, it. I mean, it's just, it's, um, you, you want to be an activist or you want to be active in your own citizenry, citizenship, but you don't want, but you also need to, to, if there's something I've learned quite honestly from my friends who are people of color is that you have to have fun and you have to decide uh, to do things for yourself so that you can keep going. So you can refill the well and mm-hmm. you can keep fighting the bad guys. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so as political as Dork Tower might be, it's still adorable. <laughs> well played. Uh, oh, thank you. I was it was like I think my my crowning achievement was having a couple of the characters arrested during a Black Lives Matter protest. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually ended up in jail. Oh, that's um, nice. Very uh, and it was kind uh, of like yeah. pushing the limits of what I could do with the characters. Right, right. Um do you ever previously think about- yeah. Beloved characters, you know, right, who right. Just, and, whose only concerns were board gaming and role playing. Right. Um, and it doesn't mean they don't still care about those things. Exactly. They do. You know, um, yeah, Andy's um, going to be working on his uh, Kickstarter because he has that tabletop role playing game that he um, uh, that Ooh. he wrote, The Hero Instant. It's about uh, you can create um, any hero. It's like, you know, if you take Marvel and DC. Mm-hmm. It isn't either of those, but you can be any character you want with any of those powers. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and so it's just, it's, yeah, it's just a RPG, RPG tabletop. So super fun. I'm in a couple of those. Lovely. As he play tests the hell out of it and then gets it. Nice. It's all going to come together. That's um, the, that's the hard part is the play testing. Um, so far not, that's not been the hard part. The oh, hard good. Part, right. The playing, the play testing is, uh, the key thing that he wants to do. He's like, do you guys want to play? And so <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's the website. No, I have no idea what it is, but here's the thing. So what your dorkdom, it's a new one. It's a new one for me. We haven't ever had this on the dork forest. Nice. Taekwondo. That Taekwondo. sounds like, that sounds like, a um, either something meditative or a fight fight. What is it? It's that? a fight fight. 
It's, oh, it it's a, fight a fight fight. It's a fight oh. fight. Taekwondo is one of the martial arts. Okay. And it's art. I've been doing it, and it's martial. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been doing it for about seven years now. Okay. Um, I honestly, uh, well, it all began when our local Taekwondo school, Dojang, um, had a demonstration at my child's oh. school's international day. Okay. And at this point in time, the kid was seven. Okay. Uh, I had to have been younger than that. It would have been five. Okay. Um, no, let's, let's go seven. Um, math is hard. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> parenting is hard. And the child was a child. Yes. The child was a child. And so the instructor, the head of the school is Mike Moe, uh, now master Mike Moe, six degree black belt, um, and also an actor. He okay. played uh, Bruce Lee in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What? That, and he's just, Fancy. he was just in a, I think it was Apple TV, um, a movie called um, I'm 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 gonna hate this if I get this wrong. I think it was well, called Ghosted or and, and his name's Michael Mo. Mike Mo, yes, M O H M O H. And yes. so go go to his IMDb. Don't yes, and don't think that that's not available to know all of his work. He was yes. starring opposite Chris Evans. He was the lead villain in a. Chris and that's Evans. what got you to do Taekwondo. Well, no, not not oh. not his. Not <laughs> I was his like, his no, Hollywood no. career, that seems unlikely. You're I did not, not that know about starstruck. His, yeah. I did not know about his Hollywood career until after I had been taking a few classes. But anyway, so uh, yes, he um, and another student were giving a demonstration at my kid's school. And uh, the kid seemed really into it. So I went up to talk with Mr. Mo afterwards. And I said, yeah, you know, be interested in Taekwondo lessons. And he said, for you. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. For my, my child. Yes. Um, but then they had a special where a family member, <laughs> a family member. Hello and welcome to a Wisconsinite who loves a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, uh, a family member could take uh, uh, like a month's worth of classes and they would get a free uniform for $25. Okay. And I was going, a free uniform for $25. <laughs> Halloween's coming. That's great. <laughs> um, so I just started taking classes as a white belt along with my kid. Right. And I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, and in fact, by the fifth or sixth lesson, maybe a little further, maybe it was like eight lessons in, I actually broke a small toe. Um, not doing oh, wow. anything, not doing anything impressive. Not breaking because, a brick? Not, no, not breaking not a brick. kicking your foot through a wall? No, just stubbing it on a mat at the right. school. Right, fifth lesson doesn't feel like it's going to be real. It's going to be yeah. right. Yeah, there's not, there's nothing really impressive you do as a white belt, honestly. Right. I mean, it's, it seems cool at the time. It's all very challenging. Right. At the time, um, especially to somebody who lacks a basic sense of coordination like myself. As wow. you can tell from the toe incident. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. You broke a toe. Um, that sucks, though. Uh, but as the doctor said, if you're going to break anything, it might as well be a small toe. Okay. Um, and then later, so I was out for a while. And then I was in uh, Krakow. I was invited to a, a Polish gaming convention. And right. I had tripped and fallen and had a really bad bruise on my knee. Um, so I was kind of thinking, okay, that's it. I'm done with it. It was fun. I've got the uniform. <laughs> Halloween's lined up. But right. you know, the the school um, bills itself as the most positive community on earth. And it really kind of is. And the whole time, my kid is telling the instructors, my dad's coming back. My dad will be back. My dad will be back. And I didn't Your want to Your kid had make... abandonment issues. Yeah, yes. <laughs> they were like, don't make me, <laughs> don't make me do this alone. He'll be back. Uh, it's, he, he likes me. He likes, he, he wants to do a thing with me. Yes. My dad just went out for some cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I seriously didn't feel like I was going to make a comeback, but I didn't want to make a liar out of my kid. Right. Um, right. So in the meantime, my kid had 
earned their first uh, new belt, okay. uh, which is the um, next up? yellow belt. Up from up from white. Up from white belt. Orange belt. Are, big dude, are they all are like karate and judo and all the things? Do they have the same belt color? No. There, 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 there are differences with some of them. Um, like it doesn't go white to yellow in everything. It, no, but it goes it white to yellow in Taekwondo. White to orange. And then oh, yellow. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's white okay. No, I, I I made that mistake myself. Um okay. it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, I came back in, uh, started doing classes again and I had to catch up with the kid. Um, right. But, because that now, now they're yeah, ahead of you. They are, they are. And it's, uh, it was kind of intimidating. And also, you know, the thing is with, as with this particular school, like there are things kids can do that adults just cannot. And physically physically oh, yes yeah. or even mentally they will like absorb instructions like a sponge oh right right um oh, like so, learning languages yes, yes children exactly they, yeah they're empty emptier vessels yes they don't um, have to push uh misinformation out of the way to, to relearn something <laughs> <laughs> yes uh so um it was you know like you'll see these kids just uh all of a sudden doing these moves okay so so taekwondo is mostly uh, it differs from karate, mostly that it, it emphasizes kicks and foot techniques. Okay. Whereas karate emphasizes hand techniques. But this is just a general. I'm not sure, in fact, w about judo. Um, uh, but um, they all will cover the same basic things. I mean, you'll still get with, with taekwondo, board breaking and weapons training and blocking and sparring. Right. Um, you don't have to hold the weapons with your feet. No, you don't. In fact, good for, there are good no dinners. weapons you hold with your feet. Your foot Excellent. should be a weapon, <laughs> apparently. The foot is alone, all by itself, all five toes, a weapon. Yes, yes, and, uh, uh, okay. exactly. Um, are you barefoot? Or are there yes. like special footies? Okay. No, they're, you're barefoot. Um, I will sometimes wear an ankle brace because I also twisted an ankle really badly as a green belt. Okay. Um, I was just like too tired and trying to practice jump kicks too long and landed poorly. Oh, wow. Um, so you have to jump in the air? To, oh, I suppose you can't just. Yes. From the, because on in the movies, uh, yes. someone is standing or in a video game, you are yes. standing and all of a sudden you turn around and your foot is about your head height and you slap somebody on the side of the face yes. with your foot. Yes. And uh, so what, so what, what do you learn initially? In, uh, we have to back up just because sure, I sure, literally sure, sure. don't know anything about Taekwondo. Yeah. So with the, like your first lesson, what do you, well, can you remember okay. like what that would kind of be? Yeah. The first lessons we came in in the middle of a cycle. So we both felt a little bit lost because a cycle generally runs two months to three months. Um, so the so you missed the first six weeks of the lessons. Yeah, four four to six weeks. We just started. Yeah, so you just you didn't know what you were doing. How, yeah, how, pretty much. Why, why didn't they make you wait? I wonder. And just start uh, because, with a, with a bunch of different people, and then you could learn from the beginning, like uh, every, like people do. Because this is the school, the instructors are terrific. So if you don't, you know, if you look lost, the instructors will come over and take you through the initial steps. So, for example, we were learning uh, the the form, um, Sangham 1. There are a number of forms you do uh, What's a in form? Taekwondo. A form is like, essentially, think of it as very violent dance steps. Um, you will run through a form. <laughs> And dance fighting like Jumanji. Welcome well, to the you will, jungle. You will have like <laughs> if you're taking dance lessons, you will learn different steps. Okay. So taking Taekwondo, you're learning different movements, and some of these will be kicks, some of them will be blocks, some of them will be punches, and each and that's them, called a form. A form, yes. Okay. So the first form you learn is Songham One, which is only eighteen moves. And 18 in fact, moves. Okay. 18 moves. And it, in fact, it's technically nine moves, but then you reverse them. You go in the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, so it's a relatively easy form to pick up. Um, and it just consists of a series of blocks and punches and front kicks, and there's a side kick in it. Um, so you will start with the very basics, and then you'll uh, go on to uh, learning the proper 
kicks and the proper punches. So there's a difference between a, a front kick and a side kick and a round kick and a hook kick and a tornado kick and an axe tornado kick. kick. Nice. Yes. Um, so it's nothing too complicated. You're just very, you're learning the building blocks. Of okay. So, martial so essentially art. nine, nine kicks or punches or movements. Yes. Yeah, steps and, and blocks, uh, yes. walking around. Yeah. And, um, and so you go in a definite you know, direction and then you reverse that direction and then you come back and, and they sort of check your, your, your form. They check yes. how, how you look when you've extended that arm or how you yes. look when you've extended that foot. Exactly. Um, are, and huh. if, if your, your pullback hands are also important, like the moves between to get power. Oh, to, you know, to reset like your, yourself. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And um, do you stretch before you do this? Yes. Is there any kind of Yes, like, there is stretching. <laughs> there is stretching before you do this. And sometimes <laughs> the stretching is the worst part when you're my age. <laughs> right. Well, the stretching uh, seems vitally important at your age, at is. my age. Yes. Yes, so. it is. Um, so a class will generally last about 45 minutes. Okay. And uh, we will take three classes a week on average and maybe – get a couple of private lessons in, in the weekend, if there's a tournament coming up or if okay. there's a testing coming up. Okay. Um, so the beginning belts are, uh, white belt, uh, orange belt, yellow belt. Okay. Then it gets really fun because I, so what, what happens is, so each of these will take, you know, two cycles to get through. So okay, you don't so two, get two, you, three month classes, essentially. two to three months. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you don't get your orange belt right away after you test. So when you go to testing, uh, you'll have to demonstrate your form. Um, you'll have to demonstrate a weapon. Um, and what, then what, what weapon are they handing you at white belt? Uh, a stick? I think <laughs> it was, yes, I think it was nunchuck was the first, uh, weapon we had. Um, okay. Uh, Song Jolbang in Korean. Uh, so Taekwondo is Korean, by that, the way. Oh, there and we go. Okay. Karate is uh, Japanese. Japanese. Um, is there. So the names are slightly different. It's Dojang versus Dojo. And. Okay. Um, uh, th- little things like that. Um, is there anything sort of emotional that they're trying to impart yes. on you as well? Oh, it's a huge, huge uh, part of the training is the emotions, the the belief, the self-belief, the uh, just pounding your chest going, yes, I can, before doing something difficult. Oh, wow. Uh, meditating before uh, a sparring it- match, getting focused, bringing your best uh, every time uh, it's, it's like, do they, br- are there breathing lessons or are they just yes. have you, or they just talk oh, yes. to you? Okay. No, there are breathing lessons. Um, you know, the whole, you know, a couple of different ways to do the inhale, exhale, you can cycle it. You can just do the straight up full uh, um, inhale, full exhale, getting rid of everything. Um, but they, they sort of talk of you through it. Yeah. Yes. And then there's a lot of self-defense, which comes in, especially during the color belts. Okay. Less so for the black belts, uh, because you know you've got more weapons at your disposal as a black belt. <laughs> but a lot of very simple things, like how to get out of a chokehold, how to put someone in a chokehold, how to bring someone down if you really have to. Right. Um, so the so, so the first three belts. Okay, we gotta yes. we gotta slow my roll here, just because I sure can't. sure sure. So you're you you've learned the forms. You've learned how to yes to punch where it looks right. Yes. And then back up, reset. Yep. yep. And then you've learned how to kick. So you've stretched, you're standing there, and they're like, okay, so what I need you to do is I need you to lift your leg and turn your foot and punt and kick. Is that what they're saying? Essentially, yes. I mean, that that's pretty much it. Because, you know, if you're doing a a front kick, there's no pivoting there. It's just very straightforward. Okay. But if you're doing a side kick or a round kick, you're pivoting your back foot and then striking either – with the uh your the ball of your foot or the heel um okay or if you're doing a round kick you're striking with the top of your foot um the top of doing, your foot yes oh if right because you're, you're sort of kick, turning it around wait round yes. kick hook kick what are the difference sorry okay so uh they look very similar 
essentially a round kick. Um, you're going, you're moving your leg uh, from sort of uh, how best to describe this. Uh, <laughs> it's up in the air. <laughs> it is. You're your up foot. in the air. And so you're coming in. Uh, uh, if you're okay, let's, let's imagine an opponent just standing there or wave master. Just standing there, What's not harming master? anyone. It's a punching bag. A, okay. A very large, tall punching bag, um, okay. which you can also kick. Um, so if you're standing in front of the wave master, a round kick, you're going to pivot and hold your right foot slightly to the outside and come in from the outside, uh, crashing into the wave master with the top of your foot. Okay. If you're doing a hook kick, you are going to the, with your right leg you're going to the left side of the wave master okay and you're coming in from the left with a hook and you're going to be hitting with your heel oh um, okay so top so, of the foot versus heel to some extent right exactly okay um and with the front kick you're going to be hitting with the ball of your foot uh you want to have your toes uh held back as much as you can you do not ever want to hit with your toes that's a okay. bad idea right because they um, would break i think it's yes. a, it's sort of like when when they when they talk about boxing, they um, oh, yeah. you should never make your, your no. fist into a with the thumb in the middle of it. Oh my like, god! Like a baby. No, never. <laughs> no. Yes. You don't. You keep your thumb slightly to the outside. Um, okay. And you want to hit with the knuckles. Um, oh. And I did make the mistake early on in sparring of having my uh, thumb on the inside, and oh my gosh that hurts oh, so much i'm lucky i did not break a thumb then. right right because you have to remember so many things and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're like spar or yes. go do something yes. uh, somebody's gonna watch you and yes. uh, <laughs> how many people yes. are in the class um, oh or it could be they can be large they can be small we've got a very uh, busy school so the evening black belt classes will be maybe 30 to 40 oh, people. Uh, people. Yes. No wonder and you need a couple of private lessons because yes. how many instructors are teaching 30 or 40 people? Uh, there'll be two or three. Um, okay. So to walk but, amongst and check for me. Right. Okay. Right. But then also like with the black belt classes, for the most part, people kind of know what they're doing more. So it doesn't take the same kind of one-on-one -on -one instructions you will have for the color belts. Right. Um, but there is the nice thing about my particular school, which is now called Level Up, L-V-L-U-P, um, martial arts, is there's a good, there's a nice selection of adults who've started taking it with their kids. So okay. the majority are going to be kids. Right. Um, the first two or three ranks when you line up on the mats will be kids. And then in the back, are the adults and are you know, a little um self-conscious uh, yes <laughs> well, it's really nice because you don't get self-conscious um it's like a support group of okay. the adults okay. um everybody's and, pretty supportive and they're encouraging of oh, each yes. other yeah absolutely the one nice thing about uh, so this is ata uh martial arts which used to stand for american taekwondo association okay now because it's more of a worldwide thing mm -hmm. they just call it ata Okay. But it's very respectful. There are no, in our school, there are no meatheads. What's a meathead? Um, a meathead, just like the oh, jocks. Meathead. Oh, uh, meathead. I thought you said a, a different word, and I was like, ooh, new word. Uh, no, 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 so no. So there's, uh, yeah, so th there's not really any goofy, th th there doesn't seem to be any bro -y kind of no, 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 bullying no. I mean, there, going on. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Um, and I doubt it would be uh, allowed. Yes, because exactly. It's a business. Uh, talk about a great way for HR to get involved. Hey, we're trying to make some money here. Uh, Barry, it's not going to be great if you're hanging out, pushing people around. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an extremely respectful uh, sport slash martial art. Um, in fact, one of the jokes is uh, you kick someone to the head and then laugh about it afterwards. Okay. And right, right. I've been kicked in the head plenty of times. And are you wearing again, a helmet? Yes, in sparring, okay. you're you're wearing gear. Okay, um, you've got a it's, helmet. You've yeah. got a, a mouth guard. Uh, you've got um, gloves, uh, sparring gloves on, which okay. are lighter lighter than boxing gloves, uh, more padded. You've got a chest protector on. Um, if you're smart and you have time, you'll have a cup and your mail. 
Right, um, right, right. You and wanna... also shin guards are really important because there is nothing that hurts quite like a shin on shin uh, smash when you're oh, blocking yeah. a kick. Um, that is one of the worst, uh, one of the most painful things right. you can have happen. Yeah. Um, so, so for the initial three belts, white, orange, yellow, okay. there's no sparring. Once well, there's you no get, sparring. It's just no, form. It's, it's just, just learning basics. how to use your body, kind of, to yes, some extent. Just the very basics. Once and you is get it tiring? To, it can be, yes. Yeah. Um, especially if you're as out of shape as I was when I began. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. It sounds um, it sounds like I would I would leave the first 45 minute thing going, I don't know that I'm coming back. Uh this, <laughs> just the concentration alone, because you have to see yes. and and you said that there's also, is there jumping in these first three forms? These first uh, three belts? No, um, there's no jumping. I don't believe in song of one, two or three, uh, the okay. first three forms. I'm pretty sure there's not, uh, I could be mistaken. It's been okay. a while since I've done song of two and three. Um, and the, the get more, the forms get more complicated as you go on. Right. Obviously they're li- they will be a little more involved every time. Song of one is definitely, the most straightforward of the forms. Right. Cause you're just um, doing your, your moving, you're got those nine moves and then nine moves backwards. And reverse. then you've got not nunchucks or whatever your first, nunchucks or whatever weapon, whatever yes. weapon it is. Now, let me ask about this early weapon use. Uh, yes. what, so they hand you a set of, let's say it's nunchucks, right? Nunchucks. Yeah. Yes. Um, that you, you have to learn how to flip them around or what do you, how do yeah, you the basic the basic nunchuck moves for color belts are a lot easier than the moves for black belts. Oh, um, the same weapon uh, at a higher level, obviously, yes. you're going to learn new techniques. Yes, so you're not going to do a wave move, uh, a waterfall, I beg your pardon, which is the, you can do the round the back. It's my favorite move. I love it so much. <laughs> it uh, cool. So you do like pass it around your back, take it to the side, over the shoulder, under the arm, bam, it's so fun so fun i will do <laughs> right, right super cool you know, looking yeah. it is it is uh it, it, and it's just like hugely fun uh so the very first nunchuck lessons you'll be getting will just be doing a triangle strike which is a three-point strike and then you whip it uh around okay um so by the time you're doing uh a black belt nunchuck form a single nunchuck There'll be the waterfall. There'll be the round the waist. There'll be a jump, a helicopter spin, right. landing you face forward. Um, and then and there's it's just two hugely fun. Chucks? Is it? Is it? Yes. And then you can also have two. Like you're... you can have two. Yeah. Yes. And I've started. Um, well, right now you catch me at a difficult position because in no in October, uh, the kid and I, who's now fifteen both tested for and achieved our second degree black belts okay. together. And then. And what was that five, test? Oh, okay. The, the test, the test, the black the belt second test. Second degree te- ba- black belt Black test. belt. Are there many okay. weapons? Are there many forms? No, there's just one weapon, but when you're actually testing. So um, as opposed to the color belts where every cycle you would test to get either your recommended or your full belt. Um, so there'd be a, um, you don't automatically go from white belt to yellow. You go from white, sorry, orange, white to orange, recommended to orange to yellow, recommended to yellow. Okay. Um, once you get your red black belt, which is the first step along the black belts. Okay. You don't, you no longer are doing a test to belt up every cycle. You're collect, you're what is called at the school midterming, collecting points so that you can eventually test for first degree or second degree or eventually third degree. Okay. Um, so a midterm will involve uh, the form doing the first degree form, a uh, first degree black belt form. Okay. Which is 81 moves. As oh, opposed wow. to the initial 18 moves from so the white So it's mostly just a memorization <laughs> test. <laughs> and that part is definitely, but it's also, there's like it's a little huge. bit of acting yeah. as well. Uh, because, so? well, you're trying to make it look dramatic. You're trying okay. to make, you're trying to emphasize your good kicks. You're trying to emphasize your good blocks. And you're trying to minimalize the stuff you really cannot do well. In my case, oh. that would be a jump hook kick. Right. <laughs> 
And that was because all through the last three years, uh, or uh, three years of school, um, four years of school, I started developing arthritis in my right hip. Right. And so that was making some of the stuff a little more difficult. Right. Um, but anyway, so you'll do for uh, midterming, you'll do your form, you will do your weapons, whatever the weapon was that cycle, um, nunchucks, um, the bow staff, which I love. Oh, I flip and love the bow staff. Right. Um, uh, yeah. If you want to weed off, let's weed off and say, what are the weapons? So there's nunchucks, there's a sword, there's a staff. Yes, There's, the sword. Okay. I love the sword. Um, is it a rapier? Is, is it a cutlass? What kind of sword? Um, is it a broadsword? Is it well, two? First of all, two, it's two plastic. Well, of course uh, it is. Yes. It better not be. <laughs> it's Toledo steel, Jackie. It, I suppose uh, it's uh, it's sixty bucks a week, and they've handed me a sword from a museum. And uh, yes, <laughs> so. um, I'm not sure what the closest. Uh, a little bit. Um, a little is bit it long and pointy? Sword. It's long or is and it pointy. curvy? Okay. I tell you what, I'm just going to go grab it and I will show it to you and then you can describe <laughs> it as you see it to the listeners. I'll be oh, right interesting. back. Interesting. Uh, look forward to the fact that this will be on YouTube, you guys. I'm talking, uh, wow, it got real loud right there uh, at 34 minutes. I'm going to be making a note. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll edit that. We don't know. Um, so here's a scoop. John Kovalik which is at muskrat john almost everywhere muskrat m u s k r a t j o h n okay i've i've at got muskrat it muskrat john and uh he's got uh he's got an essay in a in a book called what board games mean to me there's an essay in that next month there's going to be a kickstarter for for all the dork towers uh are going to be published in a book uh and not just one cuz there's 2300 of them so it'll be ongoing and um yeah, and Dork Tower. If you go to dorktower.com, you can you can read all those comic strips. And um, he's a, a artist and uh, and very funny. And so um, he's back with his sword. Okay, I guess a katana is is the actual. Basically, okay, because like, oh, right, it's right. what you yeah, would yeah. see in a samurai movie. That's it. Um, it's a katana. Yes. Yeah, well done. Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> when it came with a, it, it came with its own plastic sheath. It does, so, and you you have the sheath tucked into your belt, um, and part of the sword form is drawing and resheathing it, and there's this little bit where you're symbolically wiping the blood off of it, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> you just give the sword a little shake to get the blood off, and then okay. you resheathe it. And then you can oh. resheathe it and clean it right later. Yes, exactly. I see. Yes. Um, and so there are also, um, so yeah, the bow staff. I flip and love the bow staff. That is so super fun. Is it a tall um, stick? It is a tall stick, and you're whipping it, whipping it the around. Air, yep. And it is enormously uh, fun. And then there's the comma, the song knot, which what? are like these ice picks, uh, which I just have oh, never Electra? really. Does Electra? Is it, is it the the pointy things yes. that Electra use? Okay, yes, in Marvel. Yes, okay. I, I if I remember correctly, yes. Um, and handheld other... devil pitchforks is what they look like. Yes, that's pretty okay. much it. There we go. Um, and uh, so those are the ones I've never quite gotten the hang of because we were studying those during lockdown, and so the school was offering video uh, classes, oh, right, right. It was which Zoom were classes. great. Yeah. Um, but the uh, those you really there's like some hand technique involved, which I never quite got. Right, right. Because you needed somebody to reposition your hands. Yes, hard to do and over Zoom. Yes, it, it really was. It mm-hmm. really was. Mm-hmm. And so we're studying them now, but I am not back in class. This is the longest I've been away from Taekwondo since uh, the toe and knee incident. Right, because Seven four years days ago. after. Uh, second degree black belt testing. I went in for hip replacement surgery. <laughs> oh, right, right, because you had that the arthritis. You said right. Yes, yes. How is that healing up? How's it? How's oh, it's that? Great. Has it it's great. It's been terrific. a couple months. Highly. Or? If anybody um, our age, let's say, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is this is the first uh, uh, our age procedure I've had done. <laughs> um, right. 
Chad but... Daniels got a uh, Chad Daniels stand up comic. Very funny. Yes. Uh, he yes. got a hip replacement when he was 40. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, he had a bad hit. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it because I went from being in quite a severe amount of pain most days to zero pain whatsoever. Oh, that's great. Um, and and, and so your now, movement is still? That's great. It's, it's, uh, I'm not limping. I am just, I feel, it's like I have to remember what the pain felt like. Um, okay. But now I'm, I'm going to the gym to strengthen the leg and I'm hoping to get back on the Taekwondo mats uh, next month. Okay. But, but yes, right now they're doing the commas. And so once again, I've missed the commas. And right, there's, right. Some comic, <laughs> there's some comic chameleon joke out there somewhere, but I'm not right. going to touch it. Right, right. Next, it, uh, you guys write it yourselves. We have the rest of yes. our lives ahead of us. So, um, um, so anyway, okay. so then you got you've got the form and the weapon, and then uh, there will be sparring. So okay. the end of testing is the sparring, and you'll do three rounds of sparring with like other Karate Kid. Balls. Like you'll you'll because um, this is all happening publicly with other yes. schools. Okay, well, so this is all in school. The testing is all in school, but when you go to the tournament. Then you start doing it publicly with other schools. Okay. Um, so sparring is in, in school in yes. with, with your compatriots. And then yes. you'll take the whole school. And when you take the whole school to go to one of these tournaments, is there, is there different, like, is there a form contest and then a, and then a sparring yes. contest? Yes, there are. So what you will have, uh, you will have, um, and there are usually every three or four months in the, region and okay. ata is divided into gosh i'm gonna get this wrong but there are probably five regions in the u.s um and so you will be your region will have other states uh like we are um we've got illinois indiana ohio and oddly kentucky um okay. are part is part of our region okay um and so you'll go to these tournaments. Uh, not everybody in the school wants to compete. The kid does not want to compete, uh, which is fine because the kid um, knows they get too competitive. They get up in their head. They get they don't enjoy it. I'm not very competitive myself. I just enjoy it. I just like it for the fun of it. Right. It's so if you're not competitive, little, then it's yeah, fun. Right. It it's is. Sort of, it's sort of like when you play board games. If you yes. don't care who wins, you can have yes. a good time. Exactly. If you care too much who wins, um, yes. you are not having a good time. I, I've got yeah. a one of my very. Uh, I've got a very good friend here in Madison who simply cannot play board games. Uh, he will teach board games. He okay. will enjoy other people playing board games. He'll but watch. He knows he will get too intense in any board game, and he just doesn't do it. Right. I remember. Um, I never wanted to play board games when I met Andy because uh, I am the youngest of six, and so. He was like, that's because you've always played board games with sibling rules uh, where everybody's super nitpicky and they're just like, well, you forgot to get your $200. You don't get your $200. <laughs> and he's like, absolutely do not play board games with anybody like that. We've weeded mm -hmm. them out of our friend group. And he has essentially 40 friends that he plays board yeah. games with yeah. any given, any given week. And yeah. um, you're like, that's a lot of people. He's like, yeah, we won't be moving. So uh, he's, like, he's like, I'd like to start a commune, please. And so, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So it's the same thing with these tournaments. Um, it's fun. I'm. Uh, I only just started doing them about a year and a half ago. I was okay. actually very trepidatious about my first taekwondo tournament, but our school sponsored one of the tournaments, and so okay. I felt I kind of had to do this. It was this big convention center in the Wisconsin Dells. So it was okay. kind of, they made a weekend out of it. Oh, okay. And 750 people uh, were competing in this wow. from our area. And in fact, also because it was the Dells, some people, I don't think, I, I don't know. I'm trying to remember if Minnesota is part of our Your region. Um, region, but it's like people were coming from out of region just because it was a tournament and you and can, it was you're big. allowed to do tournaments and it was big. Yeah. Um, is it, is it the stage fright? Is there kind of a, it's a, a little stage bit of everything? Thing? It's a little bit of everything. Um, I got over stage fright late in the game as a color belt. Okay. I didn't, when I would go for testing, even though it was only 
the only people watching were other parents and you know things i would feel very self-conscious um as a black belt now i know i'm going to make mistakes but i don't feel self-conscious about it it's like if it's a mistake i will learn from it um one of the toughest things i had to do was i had to test early because i was traveling i was going to a convention so i couldn't um midterm with the rest of the black belts Mm -hmm. but they let me do my midterm with the color belts so when it came time to do forms i had to do my form on my own uh with just in front of everybody oh right because if you test does everybody at that level sort of test at the same time yeah and then the 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 instructors or whoever sort of judges or looks at people as a group and and yes. sort of does the individual okay yeah so yeah all yep. of your errors are going to be glaringly obvious if you're the only one standing there yeah exactly um, right and um, also your strong points yeah yes well and that was the nice thing because with the very first so my first uh competition was almost a disaster because um i had never done any of these things yeah. before the kid actually the kid took part as well because they were supporting the school um, but then just decided they don't ever want to do this again unless they had to. Um, yeah. but uh, so at this huge event in the Wisconsin Dells, uh, walking around decide I didn't have, I wasn't wearing any socks, but I had my flip flops. I had, I had, uh, sandals on the sandals were starting to, um, rub my feet uh and so i took the sandals off was walking around and i dislocated another small toe just hitting it against a chair <laughs> um and it's like this is before i had to do anything yeah. um so luckily there was a uh they had a medical person on site and they just wrapped the toe it was a dislocation yeah. not a break right um and i went on to compete in weapons uh nunchucks and spar very karate kid of you well done. I, thank you. Just, had, <laughs> just someone just clapping, making their hands yeah. super hot, and then putting it on your toe, and then yes. sending you out, Cobra Kai. Oh, All right. But I actually ended up, um, and I did not, I was going to compete in forms as well, but I thought that's probably not a good idea with a dislocated toe. Why? Um, Why wouldn't, I, that would, I would think that that would be easier, just because um, there's no one pitting you, because you're just doing the thing. Well, you are, but the, uh, the, because this would have been first degree black belt form, uh, there are a number of moves where you could land on the toe wrong or something. Oh, right, because like of the that. jumping. Is it, right. with the jumping, quick question. Yes. Is it about height? Because I can't, uh, the, the, um, I can't get off the ground these days. <laughs> there's, there's a, if, if there's a jump happening, it's a, it's a yeah. low one. It's it is it's more about height than distance, which is okay. kind of a shame because you know, <laughs> right. again, as the aging at process. this age, yes. at this age, um, but you know, I used to be a punk, so I used to do the whole pogo thing uh, quite okay. a bit. So I've still got some of that left. Um, but yes, it is preferably it's a height as opposed to distance. Okay. Um, so during uh, the form thing, you are jumping. Yes. Um, so. Yes, there are a number of jumps in the okay. form. Um. But anyway, uh, and so I ended up winning uh, the weapons competition. Oh, oh, so nice. I came with the first place and I did not place at all for sparring because this was my first out of school right. sparring. Mm-hmm. And it's very different, uh, the actual co- competition sparring from demonstration sparring in school. How so? And I was very good with defense because most of the time when I'm sparring, okay, I'm 61 years old now. I started Taekwondo when I was 54, 55. Right. Most of the time in school, I'm going to be sparring somebody who is 20 or 30 or possibly 40 years younger than me and right. the same belt level or maybe a belt level or two above me. Right. You're, so, you're sparring with a 15-year-old. Yes. Yeah, or an often. 18-year-old. Yeah. Those are the worst, the 18-year-olds. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that sort um, of attitude. Yes. <laughs> um, but you know, they're all they're all great kids. Um, but it's right, like but they're they kids come and they, at you. Right. They want to show off. They want they're having a really yes. good time. Yeah, exactly. And they, they don't necessarily understand. I'm sure exactly. that they, they are reminded in the sparring situation by instructors, yes, but you have to yes. know your own strength. Because yes. you have to know you're 18, I'm 61. 
uh, that guy's 61. Be nice. Be gentle. <laughs> You're, this is not your enemy. <laughs> now, the plus side, well, I mean, the, the plus side is I have become very good at defense. It's like whack a mole. <laughs> oh, there you go. At this point, yeah. just blocking everything. Yeah. Um, so I've become. Which is what you're going to need for, in the. That's that's the long game, as far as I'm concerned, yes. John Kavalik. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my first, my first ever actual competition, I just never had any attack. So I was doing defense well, but I wasn't getting any points. Um, so okay, the second time. I was in a sparring uh, competition. It went much better, and I actually ended up winning that, um, beating a third degree black belt. Every time, every uh, time you win, uh, you want to play the game again. That's the I other know. thing about board games and video games, yes. and what we've learned from from uh, <laughs> from gaming. It's, is that dopamine? Is that yeah? What it's it is? it's got to be. It's tryptophedrin. It's dopamine. Yes. It's something. It's a piece of turkey. Yes. I'm uncertain what it is, but yes. So, um. You know, so I've I've started to really enjoy the tournaments. Uh, they okay. are just huge fun for me. And I'll just, you know, even if I don't win anything, like this last tournament before the surgery, um, there one of the things with the age group is there aren't a lot of competitors in the oh, age right. in the sixty to sixty nine age group. And they oh so um, in in that they kind of break it when when you're playing another school or when you're when you go to yeah, the, when you're in a competition. When you're in a competition, they break it down into age groups so that you don't have yes. to, to fight some other 18 year old who doesn't know you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um the 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 breakdowns will be uh smaller at uh, at the younger ages. So okay. it'll be like 13 to 14 will be an age group. Right. Um, 15 to 16 might be another age group and so on. Then you start getting, I don't know if it starts at 20 to 29, but I know it's definitely 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79. Right. Um, and the big thing about success in the later age groups is simply not dying. Right. Um, that's, <laughs> Uh, because they do, you know, people fall out of Taekwondo, um, people, uh, what do you mean? You know, well, I mean, you just, you know, oh, you kind of age out or you age, people will age out. Like yeah. if somebody's doing Taekwondo, um, seriously in their twenties or in their teens, they, there's a good chance that they're not going to continue it through their forties or something like that. Um, so yeah. for me. The 60 to 69 age group was very interesting because everybody, I was the only first degree there. So because there were so few people doing it 60 to 69, they lump in first, second, and third degrees. Okay. Um, and whereas- And everybody else 59, was tw tw second and third degrees that, that you're, everybody that else you're was, working with? Well, the first, the first competition I was in, everybody else was third degrees. Oh, wow. And um, so taking- the Taking sparring uh, was a big thing. That was probably one of the uh, one of the medals I'm proudest of. Honestly, yeah. um, I beat a third degree at the end, and it was just trying to be more unpredictable in my attacks, trying to get some attacks in quickly. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm ahead! Don't blow it! Don't blow it! You know, <laughs> you, you, you spar to five points. Okay. Um, technically, a jump kick to the head is worth three points. There are not going to be many, if any, jump kicks to the head at the 60 to 69 age group. Uh, <laughs> that's just not right. my kid not, can do that. Right. My kid can win a sparring match with a quick jump kick to the head for three points. Right. At 15, uh, you can jump. Yes. You can exactly. jump high enough to hit somebody in the head. Exactly. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fight a very short person to get a jump kick right. to the head. <laughs> so, um and um, then you get two points if it's just a jump kick to the chest, which is okay. going to be more likely. And then anything else is one point or a okay. kick to the head. Um, anything else is one point, which is going to be a body blow. You're not allowed to punch to the head in okay. taekwondo sparring. Okay. Um, but for now, any, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like rambling so much here. So anyway, getting back to black belt testing. Okay. The actual test itself. Uh, you start off the day uh, running up and down a hill for half an hour um, and oh, then doing I'm... calisthenics. So this okay. is called the Black Belt Challenge. So okay. if you're testing for a black belt, any level, 
you have to start the test with this. Okay. And when I say running up and down a hill for a half hour, let's be honest, it's more like speed walking up and down the hill right. for a half hour. That's, right. It's a pleasant jog at 69. It's still really tough. Yeah. You know, and I will get up and down that hill 12 times in a okay. half an hour. All right. Um, and you're exhausted at the end. In fact, even the kids are not running at the end. Right. You know, there'll be more tumbling down. You know, gravity does its part getting you down the hill. Right. But, you know, going up the hill for the 12th or 15th time, ain't nobody running that. Right. Um, <laughs> and then you do a bunch of calisthenics. Okay. At the bottom of the hill, including uh, the song of one. Uh, you're supposed to know a second form. So okay. you, everybody defaults to the basic one. Okay. Um, and after that, you report to the Dojang for your testing, which is uh, your form. You skip the weapons if you're actually testing for a belt. That's only okay. for the midterming. Um, and if you're testing for a belt, you do your form. You might do it a couple of times for the judges. Okay. Um, you do uh, sparring, um, and you'll again have three to four to maybe five one minute matches. Mm -hmm. And those, by the end of those, you're just so exhausted. That, right. You know, at, again, at this age, uh, you know, you're just definitely just trying to keep upright and not embarrass yourself. <laughs> um, and then the part which I love more than probably anything else even including bow staff and nunchucks you do your board breaks oh right so, right the fancy you, yes you, you break some wood yes when you're testing With your for hand first or degree, your foot hand and foot okay. so you have to choose one technique from both at first degree black belt okay uh second degree black belt you had to choose three techniques oh so i had two hand techniques and a foot technique and this okay. is about I'm going to say three quarters inch pine. Okay. Of the bars. So these are not, um, uh, but you're, I don't you're think just using quite your hand, right? You have to learn how to hold your hand. You have to learn yes. how to not break yes. your hand as you punch essentially a yes. board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And you're not allowed to use padding. So, oh, weird. The kid. I suppose that, but that makes sense because that's actually going to make it not yeah. as hard. So. Well, yeah. but also like with something like the round kick, which my kid is brilliant at, that's going to sting when you hit a board with yeah. the top of your foot. Um, for me, I go um, with a palm heel strike, which is just a very straightforward motion to break the board. Okay. Then my front kick, um, I was trying to incorporate a jump front kick, but I decided to wait until after surgery to yeah. do anything fancy. <laughs> And then my favorite kick, which is the hammer fist, which is just a strike to like that. Move okay. The board. Uh, starting with your hand positioned at your opposite shoulder. Okay. Kind of in a fist, holding yeah. a fist. And then quickly pivoting your body and your arm and the fist. Um, Extends in this case, or, or does it um, stay a fist? It stays a fist. Okay. Um, and it stays a fist and you're just powering your whole way through the board. Oh, neat. Um, and it is so satisfying. <laughs> it is so incredibly satisfying. OMG. Uh, it is just the best. Okay. Uh, we're, and that we're, ends the test. And I have to tell you, we, I have uh, two questions, one of which has escaped my brain because I forgot to write okay. it down. Uh, but what would you say, what's the coolest thing you've seen in person? Okay. The coolest thing I've seen yeah, in person. Like that somebody else has done. Oh, my that, goodness. Yeah. Okay. Well, first, have you seen on a cool things? on yeah. a very oh, there are so many cool things that happen. Like some of these folks are so talented. I am I am the oldest person at our school. Okay, um, and uh, some of these kids are incredibly talented. I think just on a pure satisfaction level, um, watching my teenager do a jump sidekick to break a board is incredible because it's almost like they do the jump and it's like exactly every uh kung fu movie you've seen with the off leg tucked in and it's right. like they hang there for a second and then do the kick and right the re um uh and then land um right. so that just fills me with an immense sense of pride um sure but really you know master mo and yeah have you ever seen uh, him do something Mr. Really Bradley, cool? oh gosh yeah, it's just ridiculous. The sorts of things 
<laughs> a fifth or a sixth level can do. Um, right, because just... he, he's because he's in movies doing choreography and doing yes. a lot of jumping and and fighting. So right, that's right. kind of does it does it feel real? Does it feel like you're watching a video game or it it feels unreal? Honestly, yeah. I mean, when you see somebody, because with the movies, you are always think, well, maybe they had three or four takes. Maybe there's some CGI going on. Or maybe there's a trampoline. I yes, don't know. Maybe yes. there's something boingy that he's actually bouncing off of. Exactly. But, you know, seeing somebody at, at the master level um, and his wife, Mrs. Master Mo, um, you know, another six degree. <laughs> wow. Um, it's, yes, welcome to 1957. She doesn't have a name. It's, uh, it's Mrs. Mike Mo. And, uh, it, it, it's 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 kind of become a, a joke. There's Mr. Master Mo and Mrs. Master Mo. Um, right, right. Doctor uh, Rochelle Mo, Mrs. Doctor Gold. Yes. Girlfriend. And, Rochelle Mo, Mrs. Mo is just again amazing uh, as well. And it's like so seeing them sparring, seeing them uh, doing uh, board breaks. It's just like gravity does not exist. You know, right, like it how high can they jump? People. Gravity is something that happens to other people. Um, I'm going to guess, Miss Master Mo, I'm six foot four. Right. Um, you are very tall. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to guess he could probably, if he really put but his he, mind to it, I think that I, I'm going to say there's at least a 50 50 chance he could clear me, maybe. He could um, jump your height? No, I was going to say, can he jump three feet in this? Can he, from, from oh a standing. Lord. From a standing, do you think he can jump three feet in the in in the air? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, Easily. yes. Okay, yes. So I mean, the, the level of athleticism in the instructors is just astonishing. It's something I am never going to get to. Um, I'm okay with that. Right, right. Um, you got to make peace with where you where you're at physically. Yes, yeah. and, uh, but and Mr. just try to do what you can. Yeah. Master Mo just had his 40th birthday over the summer. Okay. And to celebrate that, he sparred 40 students in a row <laughs> and did he run up like, and down the hill for a half an hour in between each of them? he did not he did and, not uh, but i mean to me that's kind of astonishing just yeah. the level of stamina that that takes yeah um is just crazy uh last uh, question yes which is oh here's the other oh, oh sorry yeah. Go ahead. no no please continue oh no because this is the last question so what would you okay yeah here's the here's the other thing which is kind of surprising about all of this yes please i um because of the competitions I've been in, I am actually the Wisconsin state champion for 60 to 69 sparring right. weapons and form. Right. And I made it to the world top 10. Does that mean in, that you get to go fight at the world level? I, I could have. I mean, yeah. This would have been last summer. Okay. Um, I didn't see much point. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. It would have been incredibly hot. Right. I would like in to get summer. some more. Yeah. I would like to get some more experience. I competed at regionals, um, which is the the region uh, championships. Okay, so you did the, the and, state or and then region. Is that true? State regions. Okay. And, yes, and then world. Okay. Um, and actually, there's national and then world. I competed at regionals. Um, my best showing was third place in sparring. Okay. And again, I'm proud of that because there was a really tough ring. There are seven competitors and they were all really good from other states. These were the other state right. champions. A other as, as the ring, as, as it gets bigger and <clears throat> more inclusive as to there's 8 billion people on the planet. There must be some 61 year old who can jump three feet in the sky. Yes. And then, and then pop you in the head with this foot. <laughs> Yes, and the ATA oh, is it, has is, got is it gender over. split up? Is it split up? Yes, by, it is. Okay, it is, and Hurry that's up. a little problematic, you know, these days. But it is, yeah. So I was, uh, but they'll have like the men, the the uh, upper, men's, let's call yeah. them the upper echelons of men and women. Uh, so like the women of the same age group will tend to compete against themselves in the same area uh, where right. the men do. So you get to know, you know, the women of the age group as well. Um, this last, uh, competition I was in again, because there aren't always enough people showing up, there was one fourth degree, uh, black belt right. who had nobody to compete with. So they put him in our first to third degree form right. and, and every competition I was up against him. I was up against a flipping fourth degree who was as tall as me, who was just a little bit 
older than me, like maybe one year older than me. Right. Whereas, you know, a, a lot of these, like I'm the new kid. I'm one of the new kids in the 60 to 69. <laughs> right, group. right. And um, so did he take so, you to town? Did he hand well, you your head? Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. But I did manage to take um if combat you scored, weapons well, if, right, off or of him. if you can if you could score any points. Yeah, um, I could not yeah. score against him in sparring, but uh, at that point, you know, my the arthritis was really bad, <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to a rematch. You know, I don't. I, I'd have to do a lot of work to beat him, but I know yeah. I could definitely take points off of him. Right. Um, and you'll just but keep, the big shot. You're, you're right. a little competitive too, John Kavalik. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. It's fun. I mean, I, I, it's just I, good times, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's just good times. That's great. Um, and you know, so um, yeah, so those those were like it was like oh my gosh, so I've actually now got a, a taekwondo uniform with state champ twenty. And have you 20. ever worn it at Halloween? I've never once worn it at Halloween. That's <laughs> this a nice is, callback. This is now my third or fourth <laughs> uniform. Well done. Yes, congratulations on the callback. Well done. Uh, so here's my last question. We're we're sure. we're past an hour here, but my last question is is do you see that this could be useful if you were ever jumped? Um, I Quickly would be, must go into forms. One moment, um, uh, ma'am the and time, or sir with a knife or gun. Yes. I mean, I'm still going to have my money on the person with a knife or gun for right. obvious reasons. <laughs> um, like if it's a gun, I'm not going to suddenly, you know, this is like that scene from Indiana Jones with right, the right, right. knife versus gun. Yeah. Um, but I do have a little bit more confidence when I'm walking around London late at night uh, okay. or whatever. It's like, you know, somebody, if somebody's in a gang, they've gonna, they're have they going to have the street fighting experience. So I'm not going to fool myself. You know, right. I'm not going right. to go, oh, you know, it'll be like, um, you know, those officers coming out of Yale and their first experience in combat and they just hunker down and the, um, I don't know what that is. It's, but the one time it did come in useful. Okay. Was the one thing they emphasize at our school is not to get into a fight. Okay. Like to deescalate first, yep. you know, use your strong voice, deescalate the powerful stand back. Um, and I was in Florence a few years ago, uh, being harassed uh, by somebody who's trying to sell me fake watches or something like that <laughs> and just could not get rid of the person. And so I suddenly pulled myself up to the full height, turned on him, and using the Taekwondo voice, I said, go away. <laughs> it's like, Ooh. the guy just melted. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, oh my gosh, that actually yeah. works. That actually works. Uh, there you go. I was on, uh, I, I, I had a bus driver one time say uh, to me, because uh, I uh, I'm a mess. So, uh, but I'm, I'm better. I'm better now. Yeah. The journey continues, We're Rangers. We're all better. And uh, But she had to say to me, you're not going to hit me, which really woke me up. Because she was right, yeah. I wasn't going to hit her. Uh, there's, I we're, we're adults. <laughs> I was not yes. going to hit her. So I think, the, yeah. you know, if if I had to hit someone, I would be much better at it than I was seven <laughs> years ago. Right. Um, I think blocking would your, probably your come defense. useful. Yeah, your defense. Yes, the defense. If somebody, even if somebody is, you know, going to be. You know, I mean, presumably somebody's going to be kind of drunk, will be coming at you swinging, right. you know, you blocking can stop something them. like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You have a better chance. John Kavalik, this has been a delight. We're a little over. <laughs> it's been so super, super fun. You guys, you probably already know because you listen to the Dork Forest that you might know Dork Tower. You might have uh, accidentally just Googled the word Dork and got Dork <laughs> Tower because Dork Tower. Wh when did you start writing Dork Tower, actually? Um, we're coming up 2026 20, will be the 30th anniversary. Right. Okay. So the Dork Forest has been for 18 years. I did not steal it from John Cavalli uh, and Dork Tower, uh, but another 15 odd years, you guys. Anyway, so dorktower.com, John Cavalli, Cavalli is K-O-V-O-L-I-C. A-L, A-L. What? A-L, K-O-V-A-L-I-C. A-L. Ooh, look at me. Yes. Uh, 30 years later, not knowing how the hell to spell That's your name. Okay. C O V A L I C, correct? K O V. K O V A L I C. K O V A L I C. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. That's yep. okay. K O V A L I C. All right. You'll, you know him. He does okay. a lot of the art for Munchkin. He does, uh, he did the Apple on Apple's to Apple's. Always very fun. But, uh, and he's got uh, an, an essay in What Board Games Mean to Me. Uh, in March, if you just follow him, 
uh, at Muskrat John on all the things. You'll find out that he'll have a Kickstarter to put Dork Tower onto paper. And uh, John, just want to thank you so much. Super fun. I didn't That's know anything about always. Taekwondo. Yes. Oh, nor did I seven years ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Could happen to me, you guys. Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. Hi, Adal. How was the show? Well, it's with our old, we're, we're, I'm an old friend of his. You're, you have known him now these many years. You've met him, of course. Yeah, I've met him a couple of times. Yeah. John Kavalik went to college with him. Our friendly giant fan. Always been a fan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He said, our art guy, you actually made a little cameo because we were talking about (laughs) games. I did. John Kavalik. You were talking about games with an ear, ear shot from me. So, of course, I had to jump in. Right, because he also did the art for Cash and Guns, and right. that was exciting. Um, he has written an essay in a in a book called What Board Games Mean to Me, which okay. sounds like a book that you might be interested in. Yeah, I might be interested in that. Right, a fun, uh, it's a bunch of uh, people who've written different essays. He was like, a lot right. of fancy people were in this book. And I just looked at him, he goes, including me, including me. And I was like, that's right. That's <laughs> he's right, fa- He's a fancy person. He is a fancy person, dorktower.com. Mm-hmm. And but he wanted to talk about Taekwondo, and I don't. I didn't know what Taekwondo was. You didn't uh, know who Taekwondo was. I didn't know who Taekwondo was. <laughs> I didn't know. What, it's Korean. Did you use that joke? Did you use that joke? I did not. Oh. It was. Uh, <laughs> it's Korean fight fight. It's not. Um, I asked yeah. him if it was yeah, meditative. Yeah, it's martial, some martial arts. Right. I asked him if it was meditative, and he said, "Sure." Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, if you wanted to be, sure. Sure, there's some breathing. But uh, even in the first level, you get to have a weapon. Okay. Like nunchucks. You get to learn how Ooh. to do use nunchucks and a, and, a, and a giant stick and then a sword katana thing. Wow. And he's a black belt. He, wow, he might really? Be, yeah. He's been doing it seven years. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. And he said he's mostly good at defense. <laughs> That's probably Which, good. That is good. That's going to help him in a fight. That means yeah. that he won't get hit as much. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that seems like uh, that seems like if you want to be good at one of the two things, offense or defense. Offense or defense. Although they say a good offense is a good defense, right? Well, who says that? Someone who punches real good. It's a <laughs> it's a great episode though, and uh, and we had a really good time. All right. All right. Um, well, let me, let me ask you this before we okay. end. Um, okay. What, um, what was the most interesting thing to you about Taekwondo? Is this, a, is this something that you might be interested in? Um, well, uh, here's what I was least interested in. The uh-huh. fact that there seemed to be a lot of jumping. Oh. I'm not much for jumping. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a jumper. Yeah, I don't think like flat footed, I might be able to get an inch or two off the ground at this point, uh, at this late date. <laughs> I think he you could that, probably do better than that. <laughs> well, his, his, uh, his, yeah. his teacher, his, mm-hmm. who is, who played, um, he played a, uh, I can hear your phone in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, but the, yeah, it just, it can jump. He thinks the guy could jump six feet in the air, flat footed. Wow. Because John Kavalik is 6'4". Right. And um, he thinks that he could jump his height, 50% chance. And I said, could he jump three feet in, this, in the air? And he goes, for sure. For and sure. That, I would like to see Taekwondo, and I would like to see it done. Oh. Yeah. Well, I bet that's, I bet that's available. <laughs> I think it probably, it's probably a con. Oh, I bet there is. Taekwondo con. Taekwondo con. Do. Do. <laughs> Well, it's a great episode. I hope everybody enjoyed it. You know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?